Hi, thank you. Um, I'm very pleased to, to talk today. Uh, so, in such a great room, there is so many people waiting outside. So, it's really an honor. Thank you for to Frances for making this possible. Um, today, I will talk about uh, a project I really like, and I think that can change the way we use uh, the internet. Um, before that, just a quick word of introduction about myself. So. My name is Gilda Chabot. I'm working in uh, in Paris uh, for a, for a big French uh, website called Le Bon Coin. Uh, but um, we are we are um, we are doing go there. But uh, we're not. Uh, this talk is really not about about what I'm doing there. Um, so yeah, just a quick overview of how what we'll talk about. So the the project I will talk to you about is Upspin. Um, first of all. Why are you talking about Upspin? Why does Upspin uh, exist right now? Uh, then we'll have a, an overview of how it's working, and um, and then we'll do we'll see what we can do in practice with it, uh, just as a regular user or as a Go developer, and um, and then we'll we'll have a quick con conclusion. So um, why Upspin? Um, so Upspin is a uh, is the new project from Rob Pike. Uh, I guess most of you know who Rob Pike is, but maybe not all of you. He's the he's the husband of uh, René French, the the creator of the Gopher. Um, so, so last year there was two posts uh, about uh, about Upspin. Uh, the first one was on uh, published on the Google Security Blog last uh, February. Uh, introducing the the concept, and um, and then in last October there was the the original manifesto that Rob Pike uh, wrote uh, eight years ago, um, and that's where I heard about it, and that's where I I found in love with that with that project. So the reason behind uh, Upspin really is the the inf information silo architecture that we've fallen into. Uh, slowly, um, the the promise of of the modern world of the mob of the modern web was remixability and creativity, but actually, we have been we have been moved uh, into into databases that we cannot access and that we cannot control. Um, we have become dependent on the the app on the apps of the storage providers that that we use. And we are really dependent on what these people are willing to to offer us. Um, I think we have we have lost quite a lot uh, along the way. Uh, just to to quote a, a few a few ones, um, I think we should be able to to use uh, our data uh, with any apps that you, that we want, especially the one that we develop, for example. And uh, I think it should be very simple to share any kind of data with with uh, anybody we want it's it's uh, it's funny for me to think that it's not easy like to just create a public website just from a note that you have on Evernote or anywhere and from a couple of Google photos or something like that I think it should be it should be trivial um, another s another problem with that is the 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 actual apps um, developing Developing something like Google Photo is really is really something complicated, and and yet every new storage provider is trying to to redo the the same uh, photo viewers and this kind of thing, and I expect them to fail because they don't have the the years of development of Google Photo, for example. Um, storage and application should be two different businesses. And we should keep them separated. Um, so the model that Upspin is is pushing is a model with data at its core, and um, and the apps are just coming next. The apps are just like regular user playing with with data, reading and writing to it. It's by no means a new approach. It's exactly what a local file system is. But it's something that we've never truly had in uh, remote systems, and it's something that we are being that is being 
taken away, for example, on the mobile devices. Um, so the two basics that Upspin is offering is a universal naming and um, an access right. So every file has a global, um, has a global uh, identifier that you don't need to, to worry about sharing with, with other people. So it starts with, your, with the, the mail of the, of the person that owns that file, and then, then it's just a, a regular Unix-like uh, path. And, and uh, the, the access control about it is, is really something, uh, is, is another thing that comes with, with Upspin and that you should consider solved and st stop uh, wondering about. Um, so let's, let's have an overview of how it actually works. works. Um, the most uh, important thing about Upspin is actually the, the protocol. And uh, as you would expect coming from Rob Pike, it's very simple. So it's just uh, three interfaces for, uh, for a total of 11 methods. And that's really all you need to, to know for building any system that works with the rest of the, of the Upspin world. Um, um, still, there is a still, th yeah, there is a need for a for a for a proof of concept for a reference implementation, and that's exactly what the Upspin team has been has been doing doing for the past uh, for the past years. So, there is a reference implementation for all the the clients and servers, and also there is a collection of tools that that add some, some functionalities, some, some of the basic functionalities to Upspin. Um, so Upspin is, built, uh, is really built around Go, and uh, uh, the best reference is actually the, the, the Go code. And for the, for the definition of the protocols, uh, it's basically the, the interfaces from the Upspin protocol. So, um, so very quickly, so the key server is just is just uh, looking up and updating uh, user information, and the store server is basically the same thing, but with uh, with data. Um, the the dear directory server is is a bit more complicated. Um, that I won't go through all of them, but it's basically um, that's where the that's where the the solving of the name is of the of the global name is is done. And and then you have some, yeah, other other uh, other function, but I, I I won't get through them. Um, so, for example, yeah, um, yeah. If you need to, if you need to develop, well, basically for the for the global use, you don't really need to to really know how it's happening uh, behind, what is happening behind. But um, for example, yeah, if you if you are making a a server from scratch, then you will really need to know how how it works behind. But so let's let's um, quickly see how how we can get a file, for example. So the first step uh, is is with the the key server. So you you do a look lookup for the for the user, and what you get uh, in exchange is just the user public key and uh, the directory server address. Then so that's for the for the user part. Then the next part will be the, the lookup of the file. So then at that point, yeah, the, previous, the previous key server is just one, one key server for the whole upspin. So that's a known, uh, a known address, key.upspin.io. But then here, here you are uh, contacting the directory server of the user, the, the, one, the information that you had just previously. Looking, uh, looking up a file will give you back his name, his metadata, and references, and store uh, s server addresses. Um, that's actually where the first uh, access control is, is checked. Um, the directory server, at least in the reference implementation, will check that you have right to, to ask for, for, the, for the store references. Um, and then you, you can just uh, get the, the reference. So most of the time, it just, uh, it's just a, a, a hash or a, yeah, a hash. And, um, and, and then the store will just give you back uh, uh, bytes. 
Uh, most of the time, these bytes will be encrypted, um, so you need to so you need to have the the key, and you'll have the key only if you can access this file. Um, another another example, for example, uh, listing a directory. This is an operation that you do only with the directory server, and uh, for and then it will return the. Uh, a list of names and metadata and reference to store, just uh, just as before. Um, what you need to know is how to control the the, sh the sharing. So, Upspin defines an access file. Um, when you place uh, this file in a in a directory, then uh, this access right will apply to all the files of this of that directory and also of the files in the subdirectory if no other access file is uh, is uncounted um, this uh, this access file is stored in the directory server and is heavily used by the directory server uh, to to wizard information if if uh, the the user that is requesting the file don't have the the right and um um and then the the access control uh, for the f at the at the store level is done through keys basically uh you create you create a version of uh, of the secret key per user that is that is supposed to to access the file um, so yeah just a note it's not a, it's not a network protocol uh, some misunderstanding about upspin sometimes is that it's provide a special way to to share your data from your from your computer or this kind of thing like uh, IPFS would do for example but uh, this is just um, this is just a, a, a protocol it doesn't define how your server should be accessible so you need to have a you need to have a, a public server and HTTPS is mandat mandatory <coughs> um, yeah, so let's see how, how you can use it as a, as a user. So, <coughs> so there are two steps in the setup. First, first one is, is signing up the user. So it's basically creating your um, key pair and verifying your email. All of it is just putting a new user into the key server. And then you need to deploy your server. So it's installing the directory and store servers on your host and make them accessible to, to the internet. Uh, the best way to, to, to do is to use Upspin uh, uh, UI. <coughs> um, so you can download it from the official website or just install it with GoGet if you have a special uh, system. So the first time you open it, you will, you will have the, the sign up wizard. It's, uh, it's very nice, you can just type in your email and stuff. Well, then it creates your key, your keys, and it sends you um, just uh, one um, email. That's the only time they will use the email for um, for just verifying that you own the email at that point. The second step is a bit more complicated, but uh, there are some um, there is some uh, some nice wizards to to do it. So in the future. Well, Upspin is really early stage, so right now this is this is quite it's not very simple, especially for a wide audience. But um, in the future, it's most it's most likely there will be some some server providers, and there is already one that is building. It's called uh, Django. It should be it should be live soon. Uh, today, you can you can just uh, deploy your server into one of your uh, servers. Or you can also use the Google pl Cloud Platform. Um, it's really uh, everything is done from uh, Upspin UI, and it's all deployed uh, automatically. Also, you can just uh, use uh, Upspin as a read-only mode. So at the end of the setup, uh, this is what uh, what happens to your PC. So you have you have um, this uh, configuration file that is created. So it just uh, it's just uh, the configuration of what user you're using and what are your dear and store servers um, and um, and also uh, in your uh, in your data SSH uh, folder you will have the the elective curves keys that are created <coughs> 
so all these files will be used by by your uh, upspin clients uh, running locally um you have just a word about the the keys the central key, ser key server the logs are public so here are what um you can see on the on the on the website so this is the first uh, sign up you can notice the um, the new directories and store servers and this is the uh, the second logs with um, with the actual <coughs> with the actual server that i created um so now um, just uh, some of the tools that you can use straight away um the most common is the is upspinfs so it just uh, you can just uh, install it uh, as as the all the other tools and it just uh, mounts uh, a folder on your machine so from this you can you can access um your own your own files but you can also access anybody's file <coughs> um for example Rob Pikes, uh, says is easy mounts uh, is Lightroom and iTunes library with UpspinFS, and the goal is to mount the, your whole whole uh, home server, whole home uh, directory. Well, then these two other tools are, are useful. The you can install them the same. Uh, Upspin UI is the web file explorer, and um, Upspin is just a general uh, command line interface with a lot of commands. Uh, some some unofficial tools for now there is really not a lot so but i expect uh, more coming uh, in the future uh, so for example you have a browser and um, this is a music player uh, i i've done and that, that i'm using actually daily now um, so how does it play as a as a developer so let's uh, let's build a, a client app so a client app is uh, is an app that access data through upspin um, it uses the client interface uh, that the the official that the official library is using it gives you uh, a lot of uh, helper functions it basically can do everything about reading listing and writing data so um, it so it reads the the conf and key files that that we've created before and uh, and yeah, you can. It's it's uh, the part of your app that will access Upspin. So, for example, here are some IDs for uh, for uh, clients. Maybe something that synchronizes the photos that you have on your on your phone. This one will be write only into your Upspin data. Maybe a photo gallery to 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 see your files, a sharing organizer, this kind of thing, and maybe a photo editor to do some little tweaks on your photos. So <coughs> here are the, the different steps that you need for for creating it. It's actually very simple. Um, so for example, if you want to make an application that just um, reads into Upspin and just serve it into uh, uh, through HTTP, then you just need to, to initialize your configuration, then create your clients, and then in your uh, handle func, you will just will just open the file and copy it straight away um, so it's it's um, yeah it's it's very simple so the best the best way for uh, initializing the configuration is to is to load it for a fi from a file so just the same file as the one I, I showed you before um, and then the the client just takes the, the configuration file um, yeah that was actually the 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 hardest part of the of the code the rest is very simple so this is just a classic um http handler um and uh, the only thing is that you can you can see the client that open and then the rest is just known um yeah of course there, there should be probably some some more um some better error handling to know if the because here it's just a, a not found but uh, maybe the, the information is withheld or maybe maybe it's a network error um so yeah listen and serve and stuff um so just with that 
part of code. It, it compiles every, and everything, and uh, then you can just um, try out some of the files that are accessible. Um, and uh, yeah, straight away it will work with any of the of the upspin files that that you can access. So it's a very easy way to to make uh, application that that can play with data. And uh, and yeah, from from now on you can you can already there is a lot of uh, other things that you can do with it, like list all all your files, maybe filter some of the files, transcode on the fly, and this kind of thing. Um, the other thing that you can build are uh, the server and storage. Uh, so, a server app is is a um, is something that implements the directory and store servers of the Upspin uh, protocol, and that's all. The rest is the rest is you're just uh, free to to do whatever uh, whatever backend you want. So you can check the the access control if you like, and uh, and then any data source of your of your choice. It can be just a, a link to another Upspin server, or maybe it can be the GitHub API for serving GitHub GitHub issues or this kind of thing. Um, the storage is also something that is that is very well. The, the the store the the server is hard to to implement actually, but the storage is something quite easy to to do. It's just uh, the low level uh, implementation of how to store uh, reference uh, data. So there is already a lot of implementation with uh, S3, Google Drive, GCP, and this kind of thing. Um, if you want some example of this kind of implementation, the best is to go to the official repos. So for example, in the experimental uh, repos, you have an issue server. Or you can see the Dropbox storage, for example. <coughs> so, as a conclusion, um, never before we had so much of our life uh, on digital support, and um, I think there are more and more projects that uh, that want to use uh, sensitive data, for example, uh, medical data. I think we really need to get con back the the control on who access our data, and uh, we should stop um, trading privacy for for usage. Um, uh, another thing I, I, would, I wanted to say is that the, yeah, the, the computer world um, has assumed that um, the wide audience is just getting dumber and file systems have, have been hidden from, from the mobile devices and this kind of thing. And, um, and the data and services are just hidden behind um, limited apps that are really focused on consumption. I think we should give back uh, complexity to the to the wide audience because uh, sharing, well, accessing files and sharing data and this kind of thing are not complex uh, complex uh, operation. And I I believe everybody should be able to to deploy their own website, for example. And um, and uh, yeah, I want to I want uh, to to give great UX to everybody, and um, and I think uh, the key point here is collaboration, uh, doing always doing this, doing the the service together, and I think Upspin can be uh, a centralized way to 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 have all our all our applications. Um, Using the same, uh, the same storage, and um, well, just be compatible uh, uh, between each other. So if I think, uh, for example, uh, a photo viewer, viewer application can be can be really general, and we don't care about how the the data is stored behind. Uh, it just needs to to use AppSpin, and then we can work together, I believe. So yeah, that's all for for me if you have some questions. Uh, 
Uh, no, I didn't hear about uh, about uh, Um The the project I really liked before that was Cozy Cloud, which also had like data as a center. Oh, sorry. So the question was: um, there are some other uh, there are some other uh, projects to that want to do the same thing, s such as Unhosted, right? Um, well, th that's a big discussion in the in the Upspin community. There are there are some issues on GitHub about this. Um, the the Upspin uh, team is always answering that the the combination of universal security and the uh, shareable uh, aspect of Upspin are kind of unique. Um, what I what I like is the um, is the ambition of Upspin and also the simplicity of the interface. Um, yes. Um, yeah, I think the, the the most important thing is to to have some um, storage provider, well, some some upspin provider that can create you uh, servers for uh, people that knows about IT or I even people non uh, non um, uh, non IT people too, um, and um, yeah, I don't know to have some uh, some some nice apps and, and so. I think I think an easy maybe a, a transition would be to 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 create some uh, some upspin uh, servers that can just plug on onto already existing systems such as Facebook or Google Photos or this kind of thing and uh, yeah if it can be transparent and if you can just uh, access your Google Photos or your Facebook feeds uh, through upspin. Uh, Without deep having to deploy your own server and this kind of thing, then it maybe it can be uh, like the killer feature that would that would uh, spark the the widespread adoption or something like that. But uh, already, I'm I'm just using it for for myself right now, and it's already quite nice. But um, yeah, having every everybody here will be even better for sure. Yes. Yeah. No, giving permission is only for the for the owner of the directory, um, and then uh, you can choose what kind of permission you, you want to give. Just like read, list, or write. But uh, you cannot you cannot uh, only the the owner of the directory can uh, modify the access. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sorry, but we're, we're out of time. Thank you. Round of applause.